Well, thank you, John, for that, uh, that wonderful introduction. It is wonderful to be here. Um, I have to say this is just a very special place, so um, I'm very happy to, to be with you. I wanted to start with a bit of a story, um, and the story is, I think, useful because it illustrates the incredibly high regard uh, that Justice Jackson is held by almost everyone in the Justice Department, and this is true, of course, across administrations, whether it's a Democratic or a Republican administration. There's a tradition in the Justice Department that uh, the portraits, the formal portraits, of former attorneys general will adorn the walls of uh, high-ranking officials within the Justice Department. And of course, as with most things, seniority matters. So the attorney general gets his or her pick of the portraits, and the, uh, the deputy attorney general, the associate attorney general, the solicitor general, now the fourth-ranking uh, officer in the department when Jackson served, it was the second ranking position, and so on down the line. There's another tradition, which is sort of less august, which is the cabinet members, if they so choose, uh, can have access to artwork that is not hanging on the walls of the National Gallery, but is part of the extensive collection. Well, the first attorney general under which I served, John Ashcroft, um, exercised in this regard what I think was good judgment, which is rather than fill his office with portraits of uh, former attorneys general, uh, who, as even he pointed out, were not men selected for their good looks. Uh, he chose artwork from the permanent collection of the National Gallery. And so that had the effect of allowing more subordinate officials within the Justice Department to have portraits of some of the real star attorneys general. And in that process, uh, we were privileged in the Solicitor General's office to have the portrait of Robert Jackson hang in our anteroom. Um, and as one of only two former solicitors general who went on to be an attorney general um, and the only one of that, uh, that, that, that pair that served on the Supreme Court, it seemed perfectly fitting that he would adorn our wall. And then when General Gonzalez took over from General Ashcroft, uh, he decided that he was not as enamored of the National Gallery works and thought he would collect some of the uh, portraits of former attorneys general into his office. And of course, right at the top of that list was Justice Jackson. And another, the only other portrait that was actually in the SG's office at that time was a portrait of William French Smith, uh, President Reagan's first Attorney General, that my predecessor, Solicitor General Ted Olson, very much wanted in his personal office. Um, as, as it turned out, the Attorney General, uh, Attorney General Gonzalez, wanted both the portraits that were in the SG's office for his for his office. Now, I made a very strategic uh, decision early in this process and said, I'm going to let him have Smith. I'm, 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 I'm going to try to make a play for Jackson. Um, you know, Smith was very important to, uh, to, to my friend and mentor, Ted Olson, not so much to me. Plus, I did have my eye on Judge Bell's portrait, uh, since he was a former senior partner of mine in private practice. So I sort of had the, uh, the, 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 the personal office portrait covered, so I thought, so I had to figure out, though, how does one make an argument uh, to keep the Jackson portrait when there's a very simple organizational chart at the Justice Department and the Attorney General is very much on the top of it. But I was good friends with the Attorney General's Chief of Staff, and I talked to him, and I said, of course, I understand the org chart, I understand the rules, uh, and you know, we're happy to give you both, both portraits. But of course, I would like to just you know, make a, a, a ploy, a, a, you know, make a, some kind of... Uh, uh, opportunity to, to see if we could possibly keep the Jackson portrait because as a former Solicitor General it's really important I think to the esprit de corps of the office um, and uh, it would just be a wonderful thing. And lo and behold, um, you know, the advocacy I guess is occasionally rewarded, uh, the Attorney General relented and the Jackson portrait uh, stuck, stayed in the SG's office. And just as I was about to exhale, I got a call from the Deputy Attorney General. Jim Comey. And of course, he too had lost a couple of portraits to the Attorney General in this process. And when he found out that Jackson wasn't going to the Attorney General's office, of course he thought, this is great. I'll go get the Jackson portrait uh, from the SG. So here I was. You know, and I didn't, have, I didn't have a Smith portrait to trade at this point either. Um, but I knew Jim Comey. Jim Comey was a, was a good friend of mine. We worked very closely together. And I knew that Jim was somebody who cared very much about the esprit de corps of the career lawyers in the department. So I modified my argument only slightly and made the point to Jim that it would really, of course, I understand the org chart, would be happy to send Justice Jackson's portrait along, 
but, uh, but it would really be important to the folks in the office if we could keep them. And I, I knew my man, uh, Jim relented in a heartbeat, um, and, and we also got to keep the portrait there. Uh, I was about to exhale again when the Associate Attorney General made, made a point both for Jackson and for Judge Bell's portrait, um, at which point I, I rehearsed my lines on Justice Jackson, um, and, then as, and, and, and that worked, and then as to Judge Bell's portrait, the Associate Attorney General was, 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 a, was, was a great lawyer named Robert McCallum, who was a partner at another prominent Atlanta law firm, Alston and Byrd, um, and I told Robert, you know, obviously if we could keep the Jackson portrait, that'd be great. The Bell portrait is yours. I'll just have to content myself with telling my former partners at King and Spaulding that the judge is now hanging in an Alston and Bird lawyer's office. Um, and instantaneously said, no, 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 you keep them. You keep them. <laughs> uh, so this shows both advocacy in the, uh, in, within the executive branch, but the reason I tell you this long story is because it just shows the reverence with which Justice Jackson, Attorney General Jackson, Solicitor General Jackson was withheld by all the senior lawyers in the Justice Department. And this is in a Republican administration, and Justice Jackson, after all, was FDR's Attorney General. So that in and of itself uh, tells you something about the strength of the views that people have about what a wonderful servant of justice uh, Justice Jackson was. I'm gonna return in a minute to just a few thoughts about why it is that Justice Jackson is held in such high regard and is held in such high regard in the Justice Department.